بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد مدثر شہزاد فرام یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا نیکسٹ لیکچر آف ایولیوشن اینڈ پرنسپلس آف سسٹیمیٹکس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس In this topic of orthogenesis, we will discuss that every organism having innate tendency in their body to evolve their body according to their internal and external forces. Orthogenesis is also called as straight line evolution, orthogenetic evolution, progressive evolution, evolutionary progress, progressionism, orthogenetic evolution or orthogenesis. These are the different names of orthogenesis. Orthogenesis is basically a theory in which the successor members of evolutionary series became increasingly modified in a single undeviated direction. As I have already told you that ortho, in orthogenesis, every living organism has an innate tendency to evolve in unilinear fashion due to some internal or external driving forces in that local environment. Every organism can change and can change itself as the demands of that environment. Dear students, in this diagram you can easily observe the mechanism of orthogenesis. In this diagram you can observe that there is a variation in a particular direction in which first of all primates that were tetrapod and moving on the four legs was evolved into a human that is moving on only two legs having less hairs on its body and have well developed brain this type of evolution is called as orthogenesis dear students orthogenesis is a theory that tells us the series of stages through which all cultures passed into the same order in the next generation. Simply, we can call it that the offsprings having characters of their parents that were developed into their life stages. Orthogenesis is a hypothesis that is based on essentialism and cosmic teleology and proposed in intrinsic drive which slowly transforms into species. There is a famous scientist named as George Gaylord Simpson. He called the orthogenesis as a mechanism that is the maestrious inner force of organism. The term orthogenesis was firstly used by a biologist named as Wilhelm Haeckel in 1893. Other than Theod Emer firstly introduced the definition of orthogenesis. According to his definition, there is a general law according to which evolutionary development takes place in a noticeable direction above all in specialized groups. Dear students, in 1922, Michael Goer write about the orthogenesis. 
he write that the orthogenesis has meant many different things to many different people ranging from a mystical inner perfecting principle to merely a general trend and development due to the natural constitution trans tra, natural constitutional restrictions of the germinal material in the most modern statement of the theory the idea of continuous and progressive changes in one or more characters due accordingly to same to internal factors in these two different diagrams you can easily observe the ortho genesis here in this diagram you can observe a primate having tail like structure a large fore limbs and smaller back limbs that were developed into another primate and at last after the last development human was established on the other hand in this diagram you can also observe a smaller change in different living organisms forming firstly the chordates that are called as fishes that were developed into amphibians and amphibians were evolved into reptiles and reptiles were evolved into the next developed organism that are called as mammals here you can see the different life stages of different organisms that were developed and evolved into next generation now we will discuss about the evidences of orthogenesis firstly we will discuss about analogous or parallel variations that are observable they are the modifications of similar characters which appear in different branches of same large group or in unrelated groups for example the total reduction of side toes among artiodactyles in several unrelated genera the artiodactyles are maybe giraffe camel or hong bok here is another example of orthogenesis it exists between the pseudo horse of south america and true horses of northern hemisphere both having three toes in their life history but were developed finally in a single toed modification there are several structures which were evolved beyond the point of usefulness such as the tusks of jefferson mammoth and antlers of irish deer both the animals uses their tusks and antlers respectively in their life stages and both the organs were developed and were remained in their next offspring now we will discuss about the next character that is called as adaptive radiation adaptive radiation basically a rapid evolutionary diversification of a single ancestral line it is a evolution of a number of descendants with a great variety of adaptations to different niches of a local environment from a single ancestor 
adaptive radiations may occur when member of a single species occupy a variety of distinct niche with different ecological conditions adaptive radiation can be simply called as adoption adaptations of a local community towards their local environment in which they may survive consequently the members evolved different morphological features or it can be called as different morphological adaptations in response to different selection pressures if we talk about the examples of adaptive radiation we can be seen in the variety of beak types in finches of galapagos island the example is already discussed in our previous lectures that the finches of galapagos island having about 13 different types of beaks that were evolved according to their behavior of feeding the finches have specialized beak shapes depending on their primary source of nutrition the primary source of their nutrition may be seeds insects nuts or nectars dear students here is a classic example of adaptive radiation in the form of african cichlid fishes in this diagram you can easily observe that there are different fish species evolving the different niches of the lake and according to their environment they make changes into their bodies and this is called as adaptive radiation dear students there are different researchers who worked on the adaptive radiation in which number 1 is george gaylord simpson इसने एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन की यहाँ पे एक छोटी सी डेफिनेशन दी थी जिसके मुताबिक एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन इज अ रैपिड प्रोलिफ्रेशन ऑफ न्यू टेक्सा फ्रॉम अ सिंगल एंसेस्ट्रल ग्रुप यानी अगर कहीं पे एक सिंगल एंसेस्ट्रल ग्रुप मौजूद है तो सिंगल एंसेस्ट्रल ग्रुप से एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन की मदद से वहां पे नई स्पीशीज या नए ग्रुप्स जो है उनका बनने का जो अमल है उसको हम एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन का नाम देते हैं उसके बाद यहाँ पे कुछ और रिसर्चर्स भी मौजूद हैं जिनमें स्वेग स्टैनले एंड वोल इन तीन डिफरेंट रिसर्चर्स ने डिफरेंट टाइम पीरियड्स के अंदर कुछ वहां पे मैक्रो एवोल्यूशन की टर्म्स के लिए मुख्तलिफ वहां पे एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन की टर्म जो थी वो यूज की थी इनके मुताबिक एक लोकल इन्वायरमेंट के अंदर जो मैक्रो एवोल्यूशन होती है उसमें एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन का बहुत अहम किरदार होता है और एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन के लिए यहां पर एक लॉ बनाया गया था जिसको ओसबोन लॉ का नाम दिया जाता है और इस ओसबोन ओसबोन लॉ की जो डिटेल है वो नीचे नोट्स के अंदर प्रेजेंट है डियर स्टूडेंट्स एडोप्टिव रेडिएशन इज रिकॉग्नाइज एज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोसेस रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द ओरिजिन ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म adaptive radiations produce diversification through ecological specification or through ecological specialization the adaptive radiations are essential for to understand how ecological forces can drive evolutionary diversification and shapes the way species interact with their environment in these adaptive radiation a species living a local environment and the interact with their local environment will be discussed if we talk about the vertebrates african cichlid fishes are the best example of adaptive radiation on the other hand 
blocks of Rift Valley Lakes, Victoria, Malawi, and Tangyaka, independently diversified into hundreds of species with remarkable ecological and behavioral specialization. But unfortunately, research is focusing only on African lacustrine citrullates. This is another diagram of these different species of citrullate fishes that we have already discussed in above slides. Dear students, here is another classic example of adoptive radiation in the form of Darwin's finches. As I have already told you about the Darwin finches, there were approximately 13 different species of finches on Galapagos Islands and the 14th species was living on the main land. All of the 14 species having different beaks as according to their feeding habits. This is also a classic example of adoptive radiation. Dear students, these finches were belongs to a largest family of bird that is called as Fringillidae and were lived in Galapagos Island that is occurred in the Pacific Ocean. Study of these dark birds in their native habitat gave Darwin's his first insight into evolutionary process. Darwin ne jab basically basically in finches ko island ke upar dekha tha to ye pehla point tha jo Darwin ko apni taraf khinch raha tha Darwin ne wahan se is cheez ko observe karna shuru kiya ke mukhtalif organisms jo hain unke andar is tarah ki differences kyon paida ho rahe hain ek hi jaise printe hain aur unki jo beaks hain unke andar bahut zyada differences nazar aate hain jaisi tarah agar ek jaise organisms hain उनमें अगर हमें मुख्तलिफ डिफरेंसेस नजर आते हैं तो बेसिकली इसके पीछे लॉजिक क्या है कौन सी मुख्तलिफ वजूहत हैं जिनकी बुनियाद पर ये आर्गनिज्म टोटली एक दूसरे से डिफर कर रहे हैं डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट वॉज ऑब्जर्व दैट प्रेजेंट डे असेंबलेज ऑफ दीज डार्वन फिंचज वर द डिसेंडेंट ऑफ स्मॉल स्पेरोलाइक बर्ड दैट वॉज इनहेबिटेड on the mainland of south america but in history that sparrow like bird called as finch was migrated towards the galapagos island after leaving the mainland and moving towards the galapagos island these finches were making different colonies on these islands according to their specific niches and these ecological niches were necessary for their different feeding habits according to their different feeding habits these finches were evolved into 13 different type of beaks and these 13 different type of beaks were important for their survival and their selection pressure on that island. Dear students, all of these finches were not present on a single island, but these were present on different islands of Galapagos. Galapagos Island is basically not a single island, but is a combination of many different small islands. All of these four species of different finches were belongs to four genera. Number one is Geospiza. Number two is Camarahinkus. Number two is, uh, number third one is Sirthidae. Number fourth one is called as Pinaro Loxius. 
as i have already told you about these finches these finches having different beaks with different shape and size due to their different feeding habits according to the history of these finches it was observed that the ancestral finch was a ground dwelling seed eating finch but the current 14 species were distributed into four different groups in which number one group of the finches that were a ground dwelling seed eaters the second group of these finches were living on cactuses and eating seeds the third group of these finches were living in trees and eating seeds and the last group of these finches was tree dwelling eed eaters dear students in this diagram you can easily observe the four different groups in which first of all you can observe the seven different species were belonging to a same group called as mainly insects eaters number 2 there are three other species four other species that are belongs to mainly seed eater group and on the third side there were two species of finches that were cactus seeds and parts eater finches and the last one is called as birds and fruit eater finch that is also called as vegetarian finch that was all about of today's lecture you can send me your questions aap mujhe apne jo sawalat hain wo bhej sakte hain agar kisi bachche ko koi bhi kisi kisam ki koi difficulty hai वो अपने क्वेश्चंस जो हैं वो सेंड करके उनका आंसर्स ले सकते हैं